Kareen in the room. Do you want to say hello, Kareen? Or we'll say hello to you if you're just She's listening. Muted. Hi, how are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm yes. just I'm listening. I'll probably chime in now and then. Okay. Computer, you're so welcome. thank We're you. Thank you anytime. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um would I, either Charlie like to do the opening prayer? You want to do it, Charlie? So we do an invocation prayer at the beginning. Uh, I'll do it if you As we have come together in the consciousness of the one mind, the one life, and the one presence, it's expressing through each and every one of us. And that presence, that mind, is the mind of God. And coming together in the celebration of our God-likeness, what emerges is the beauty the peace, the love, the assurance that we're all one. So be it. So it is. So it is. Thank you. All right. So Chuck will be our speaker today, and he's going to talk about psychosynthesis. And I've got some slides I'll put up here and share with you. So at any point, Chuck, go ahead and take it over. Okay. And before we were talking uh, with Nikki and so on, before we started it, uh, you know, I got 40 slides. Probably won't get through them. Nikki's going to be my uh, timekeeper and kind of say, hey, we're up to 30 minutes or whatever. Um, my, my, my personality is to be pretty relaxed. Ergo, ask questions at any point. If it's something I'll come back to, I'm going to tell you that, that, hey, I'll get back to that, or maybe that's, we don't want to do that today or whatever. So uh, what, what you have in the title in front of you, Psychosynthesis and East-West Psychology with many applications as a uh, presentation for your community. Uh, this, was a, uh, this was a lecture, a presentation I did for the Washington State Psychological Association probably about seven years ago. And uh, so I, I just adapted it uh, for your group. Um, as I was saying to Nikki as well, um, that's great. You are quite welcome to use these slides to borrow from them. There's no copywriting, so just use away. I don't have any problem with that. Um, psychosynthesis is a spiritual psychology. Um, um, do you remember Leadbeater's Led Beater's book uh, about theosophy? It was it was titled "How Theosophy Came to Me," <laughs> and I would say how psychosynthesis came to me that it, it happened to me. It wasn't something that was. Let's search for a spiritual psychology. No, you know, kind of a Shirley MacLaine book flies off the shelf and lands in your hand kind of situation. <laughs> so that, that's how I got into it. Next slide. Okay, that, that's me. So I'm retired out of Bastyr University. I was also saying to Nikki, Bastyr uh, in Seattle, um, Kenmore, is the largest trainer of naturopathic doctors in the United States. Um, also, uh, we have a pretty successful undergraduate and graduate psychology program as well. So I taught in those programs and I worked in a clinic a couple of days a week. They have a rather advanced uh, holistic clinic uh, in Seattle. So I, I, I work there as well and, and supervising and seeing clients. So, okay. Okay, let's some definitions in psycho plus synthesis. That should be fairly obvious. Um, synthesis, Charlie was just referring to it in his invocation. Synthesis, the one mind, the God mind that is in everything behind everything. Nikki, in every molecule and cell and everywhere else is synthesis. It's that force which is holding it all together. Psycho, psycho in this case, meaning the mind. So mind plus synthesis, so we'll explain more. 
Uh, the psyche part of this is a Greek word for soul, as you guys know. And it's usually said to be the mind. In my personal experience, in my work, and my work with clients, there, <clears throat> there is certainly a higher mind that extends beyond the lower mind that our everyday uh, you know, capacity to think. There's something much greater and much higher. And uh, for me, psyche includes that. Psychosynthesis is really both the higher and the lower mind, as I was referring to, plus the emotions, plus intelligence and the body, and the intelligence of the body, which has come in very much in the practice of psychology in the last, what, 50 years, realizing the body has its own wisdom, the cells have their own wisdom, et cetera, and et cetera. Synthesis, the unifying, coordinating, and arranging, properly bringing together into a functioning whole. So this, this, this goal. Okay, next. Okay, the higher self for the soul. Psychosynthesis, and we'll abbreviate it PS just because it's simpler that way accepts and, post and postulates the existence of the higher or spiritual self. Um, okay. When, when, um, when Asajoli was uh, assembling psychosynthesis uh, in the earlier part of the 1900s, um, um, it was pretty uh, out there, probably still is for a lot of psychologists, to think about the spiritual being, the soul that underlines everything and stands behind everything and is our true identity, our true self, uh, that, that higher self. So psychosynthesis postulated it and put it right in the middle of everything, that that's, that's who we really are. Um, um, <laughs> Sidebar, one of, one of my Smith sidebars here. Which, um, Roberto Azioli, uh, Italian psychiatrist, and I said it in the Italian way, Azioli. Okay, you got to use your hand when you say it to him. So, Azioli. And uh, he was initially a student of Sigmund Freud. You may have heard of Freud. And Freud called him the bright and shining light in Italy. Well, that was up into the time when uh, Sagioli uh, wrote his doctoral dissertation. Even though he was an MD back in the day, you also had to do a doctoral dissertation just like for a PhD. And so he did his doctoral dissertation, and it began with, <laughs> Freud has built a house with a basement and a first floor. I want to have a second floor with a sunroof that lets in all the light. <laughs> <laughs> that that did not sit particularly well with Sigmund Freud. <laughs> he was very concerned about the basement. Mm -hmm. In psychosynthesis work and its conceptualization as therapy work, um, we don't rule out the importance of the basement. Um, you know, we, we got a basement and uh, that's where a lot of that stuff that we've repressed and pushed down lives. And it's important. It's very important. So even though we want to let in the light from the higher self. So, um, all right. And as, as you said, you know this, I'm not saying anything you don't know. The higher self is considered uh, the true self that exists before we incarnate and after we leave this body. And uh, Charlie and I are moving toward that uh, conclusion someday in the future of uh, when we leave this body and assume our real identity. Um, so we did we did uh, definitions. Let's see. Do we want to move forward about two slides? Oops. That's okay. <laughs> no problem. There we go. <laughs> yeah. The soul which creates matter and merges merges spirit and matter. In the, in theosophy, the soul is considered the link pin, the, the linkage between that which is purely spirit and that which is material. So it's it's the intelligence within that links the two. Um, it is the, the unifying principle of nature, the spiritual aspect. Um, in the Indian tradition that I'm most familiar with, a combination of Atman, Buddhi, and Manas. 
In other words, the, the higher intelligence, which is an emanation from the sun, if you will. By the way, I wouldn't teach that to a client necessarily. I'm giving it to you. Okay, I wouldn't say that to a client, but that would probably stretch them to the breaking point, depending. But at Atman, the higher self, if you wish on this Sunday morning, my brothers and sisters, you know, it's associated with the Ajna Center, it's the middle of the forehead. It is uh, associated with the sun. And uh, so, right here. Okay. Um, the Indian tradition, Atman Bodhi, which is the wisdom aspect, uh, often associated with the heart chakra, the heart center, and manas or the mind, uh, which in the chakra system is actually the throat chakra. Uh, it is will, love, and intelligence. That's what the soul is. Next. What is the spiritual psychology? Um, why a spiritual psychology? Actually, a lot of people want to go beyond what they think are the limits of the, the current psychology and philosophy. They would like more. They want to go deeper into depth and into the higher higher realms. As people are incarnating, it seems a little more advanced. There are many people who are ready to go deeper. Nikki, I'm sure in your conference work, you have seen that in different parts of the country and Charlie and, and, and your work with people. Um, conventional psychology is oh so focused on what's the matter with people, <laughs> okay? without talking about what is the good, the true, and the beautiful, as the Greek said, um, with the higher part of ourselves, which raises us up. Um, the, uh, Asagiola used a pretty neat term. He called it the, re the repression of the sublime. I will say that again, the repression of the sublime. is pushing down to the highest aspect of ourself by psychology and by many people. Um, many people who have come to me have had a glimpse of, they've had a dream, they've had an experience, they've had a synchronicity, and it starts to open them up to maybe there's more going on here <laughs> than, we, than we've been taught by our philosophy, and, uh, you know, um, all right, let's see, um, but I want to also, I want to put very clearly in front of you the spiritual psychology, as I said, also, allows for the fact that we, in fact, uh, do have the basement as part of our structure. And many times have stuff we got to deal with. None of us escape childhood without some stuff. <laughs> None of us escape marriage without some stuff. Anyway, no, that's... <laughs> okay, all right. I can relate to that. <laughs> all right, let's move forward. Uh, the personality... The personality is what most of us are, are most acquainted with. We, we recognize our physical bodies. Unless we're very repressed, we realize we have an emotional component. And we have this lower mind that we can converse, use words, use the left brain as we communicate with each other. Psychosynthesis first focuses on the integration of the personality. So again, it's not escaping into the spiritual as getting around the personality, but what do you need to work with in your personality? What is working? What isn't working? Um, where have you been and where do you want to go in your personality, if that makes sense? And so working there before you kind of take the leap into the higher, it's, it's, it, I don't want to separate it dichotomously because it's not a dichotomy, it's a both. So... Um, the parts of the self. <clears throat> this is a. This started with psychosynthesis, as far as I know. This whole idea of subpersonality, so many aspects of self, and we all have many subpersonalities. When you're when you're when you're saying I'm I'm the minister, uh, you've got a subpersonality operating with a whole bunch of expectations and ways of being. I'm the husband or wife or boyfriend or whatever, a whole different set. I'm the daughter or I'm the mother, right? A whole different set of operations in the personality. So the psychosynthesis starts to come to grips with what is that? 
uh, are there things that needed to be upgraded or changed or uh, are standing in the way of moving forward? Okay. Roberto Azioli, 1888 to 1974, um, Truth in Advertising. I never met Azioli. He died before, just before I get into psychosynthesis. My teacher, who I'll mention, Edith Stauffer, was a personal student of Azioli. She she knew him. So that, that's Roberto Italiano, uh, Jewish by background, by his tradition. Let's do the next slide. It'll, it'll yeah, okay. Entire life in Florence, Italy. Uh, he was an Italian Jew, uh, as were his parents. He was an early student of Freud, the bright and shining light, until he was, became seen as a critic of Freud. Uh, his parents, and this is very interesting, if, uh, if you believe in karma, his parents were Rosicrucians, Kabbalist, and Theosophist. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't get much better parenting than that, I would say. So you know, but and needing to be careful because they were in a very Catholic country, and I had to be had to be careful about it. I don't think it's in my slide. Asajoli was jailed by Mussolini. Uh, they were scared of him because of his spiritual teaching, and so they put him in jail and. Uh, I don't know much about that. He didn't talk about it as, or write about it as far as I know. I just know he was jailed. So uh, I told you about his doctoral dissertation about wanting to build a house with a second floor and the sunroof. Um, he, along with Jung, are considered to be the uh, forefathers of what's called transpersonal psychology, the psychology beyond the personality. So they, they got things rolling. Okay. His life work was the blending of East and West. He was, um, some truth in advertising here, he was a, a, a profound student of theosophy and the occult tradition, the esoteric tradition. Uh, he was the, let's say this carefully, he was the Italian secretary of the arcane school. So these are the teachings of uh, Dwakul, Jwalakula, as they say in India. And so he was the Italian secretary of the school. So he had a very close association with Alice Bailey and uh, with uh, the one who's called Jwakul, Jwalakula. So, okay. Basic ideas, modern psychology has understood the role of the unconscious mind. Okay, unconscious determinism. What going on? What's going on in the in the basement and in the shadows is controlling your life. That's the idea. And there's there's some truth in that. Uh, uh, Chuck, I, I, if I may interrupt, I have sure, a question. Sure, sure. Yeah, you talked about his relationship with Dwight Cool. Is that correct? Chuala Kula. Yeah. Drug. Was was you know my understanding is that Alice Bailey. Uh, brought in information from Dwight Kuhl or what's called the Tibetan. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. She was the amnesis, it was a, amnesis, I can't say it right. The the channel. <laughs> yeah, the channel. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. It's the channel that led to the White Cliffs of Dover. <laughs> There you go. It's very close to there, <laughs> but 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 a little farther south in Italy. So there, <laughs> yes. And uh, I could say, I won't get off too far off the track. I could say quite a bit about this and my own my own teacher for the last twenty years, uh, K. Pavarthi Kumar, K. P. K. Uh, a very conscious connection with Dwakula, Chwalakula could uh, go to him and make that connections at will anytime they were on the, um, the, on the tether, on the string of connection. <laughs> right. Yeah, very powerful. Okay, so anyway, yeah, they got the basic idea. I want to, again, I want to reiterate the psychosynthesis does not say you don't have a lower self or a basement in the house. You do. But it's not to be the, the sole focus at all. But it's part of the work, but not the sole focus of the work. Very different than most of psychology. Uh, you know, I've been a psychologist for over 40 years. 
people come to the psychologist or the counselor to work on a specific problem, do that, move on, we're done, bye, thank you. Uh, here's your help. Yeah. And then I rang the bell. I'm sorry. I, mu I muted her. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Hello, muted person, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> I can be rather muted at times myself. Okay. <laughs> Let's move to the next slide. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Um, yes. As I said, the modern psychologist is to stick with the lower self and does not have much or any interest in the higher self for the soul. Um, with the Sagioli, very much a dual focus, bringing in the whole notion that we are the soul, that we are Atma, and that's the true self. So an attempt to bring East and West together. So, okay. The egg diagram is helpful. This could be something, and for those of you folks in ministry too, to think about as you work with people. I remember years ago when I was in seminary, about 100 years ago, um, learning at that point that uh, there's actually more counseling is done by ministers than is done by quote-unquote counselors. So ministers do a lot of work individually with people. Egg diagram, and we'll go through it really quickly. Uh, this is a representation of the self and all of its aspects, if you will. Number one, the lower unconscious, um, the stuff that pops up <laughs> the, from slip of the tongues to your dream life to, uh, you know, what, what you blurt out and into you, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> or you realize you have automatic reactions to different people. Boom. If you're being honest, we all do. That comes from the lower unconscious. There tends to be a lot of our, our childhood experience, which a lot of it is pre-verbal even, experiences that we have a really tough time acknowledging because it happened, you know, basically in the first two or three years of life and what was going on. Uh, I hope this will set okay with you guys, but what was the environment like? Uh, how did mom treat you? How did dad treat you? Uh, what was the belief system in that environment that you imbibed, uh, whether you wanted to or not? And, uh, you know, when you cried, were you picked up and nurtured or were you go away? You know, boys or girls shouldn't cry. You know, what what, what was that whole educational experience and uh, firsthand experience that all winds up being in uh, the lower unconscious? And that's the work of a lot of psychologists, particularly Freudians, Freudians working with that. And uh, the number two field of consciousness, the middle unconscious, it, let's just say that means it's closer to the conscious mind. You start to realize what your childhood was like, what the environment was like. You, you start to study it and come back to it, yes? And so that, that's uh, that number two, the middle unconscious. Number three, the higher. This is harder to describe, but... And I'm talking to a group of spiritual folks right now, and many of you will have uh, precognitive dreams. You will have uh, flashes of light. You will see different entities, um, you know, both in meditation and in your sleep state. This is part of the higher unconscious or superconscious. And uh, as you develop meditative skills more often, more frequently, you will be able to tune into that realm, which is really the soul's realm. And uh, where we meet, we meet the soul and we meet saints and we meet different different peoples. Does that make sense to folks when I say that to you? So that's the third zone. Number four, the field of consciousness. And hopefully right now, as I talk to you, we're, we're in at number four. We're in the field of consciousness. <laughs> we're dialoguing with each other. We're looking at each other. We're making assumptions about each other, and particularly about me right now, because I'm doing the talking. And so that's, that's the field of our here and now, right now, awareness and consciousness. Number five, the, it's a little harder to describe in a sense. It is a sense of self. 
And it's a sense of when, particularly in meditation and meditative states and retreats and so on, you'll have a sense of, hmm, I'm the I. I am the I. One of my one of my dear friends, when she was young, she looked in the mirror and saw saw that she was a self. <laughs> and it, it got her interested in Sufism and other things, Taoism, Sufism, which, you know, holds this notion at the center. By God, at the center of all of this, there's a self going on, an I, an I am. Does that make sense to folks? So that I am at the middle. And to get in that kind of clear field of consciousness. Um, number six at the top, uh, the transpersonal self. Um if you're blessed enough sometimes to come into a recognition and a realization of who you have been reincarnationally, to make up a word, and uh, you start you start to be able to bring in a, a wow, you know, this seems very familiar to me. I've done this before. <laughs> and in drawing on the wisdom of that higher self, asking for the wisdom of the higher self, uh, learn, learning to work um in psychosynthesis, we use a lot of visualization. Visualization is a very powerful way to access that, that, that higher higher stuff. Outside of there and surrounding all number seven and surrounding the whole egg is the, the collective or universal unconscious. And Jung would, Carl Jung was a great champion of teaching about the, the universal unconscious uh, you know, realm and how much we, we draw from it. Um, the quick sidebar, and I'm sorry, this is the college professor is just filled with stuff up here, and you know, so it tends to kind of roll out sometimes. Um, you know, Jung, Jung had the experience of uh, going into a quote unquote insane asylum in, in Austria and hearing a quite insane person babbling about how each day. Uh, uh, the, 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 the sun was swallowed up by the, I don't remember which animal it was, right? And it was swallowed up by an animal. And then every morning the sun was regurgitated by the animal. And that's why the sun rose and set. So he heard this uh, Austrian peasant babbling away. Okay, that's interesting. Some years later, Carl Gustav Jung went to Africa visited a tribe where they told him a legend of how the sun was eaten every every night and regurgitated every morning and that accounted and he realized oh my god how did this peasant in austria and this tribe in africa have the same wisdom teaching does that make sense to you guys mm -hmm. so he started to say oh my god there there is this unconscious field of symbols and ideas and teachings uh, that we can draw upon and do draw upon. So, okay, next slide. Oh, by the way, any questions about the egg diagram? I guess you got it. <laughs> okay, we got it. Okay, just remember Chuck's a good egg and you've got it. No, no, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> two, two stages of psychosynthesis, and I've been alluding to this. Number one, called personality integration. It's the work on, um, in a very non-judgmental way, to learn to look at yourself and how you operate in the world, how you are with different people, different situations, where have you come from and where do you want to go in the world, and that's personality and integration. That's that's an ongoing and forever process for most of us. We're just probably still working on it, most of us. So, you know, I hope we are. I hope we're still working on it. And then soul infusion, that is a term taught by Jualakula in the, the, in, in the Alice Bailey teaching, the soul infused personality. I love that phrase. I use it every day in my meditation, soul infused personality. You're not escaping the personality, but you're bringing in the, the energy of the higher self, the light, the wisdom, the intelligence of the higher self, which also tunes you into the, the whole, the whole of humanity. Okay, next. Uh, frequently used techniques. Hey, how are we doing, Nikki, time-wise? We are right at the half hour spot and you're on slide 16 of 40. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, let's do a couple more and then we'll take our, we'll take okay. our break. So, okay, uh, frequently used techniques. 
And again, a lot of ministerial folks are trained in psychosynthesis. That's been very common. Subpersonality work, looking at the different aspects of ourselves and how we operate, what what needs to be changed, what's dominant in us. Um, um, uh, I, when I was doing my sub my subpersonality uh, work years ago and my own training and my own psychosynthesis, I saw as much as I like to be Mr. Night Guy, nice guy, there was a part of me that was definitely the gunfighter that liked to get into debates and shoot you dead if you disagreed with me. Uh, and that's even my more scientific side in a lot of ways. It was very critical. And, uh, you know, I, I realized that I had a, a great big old uh, mystical priest inside of me, even when I was much, much younger. And that was that was a part that had to be rec- couldn't be denied and needed to be reckoned with. That's subpersonality personality work and it's very, very helpful work with people. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, the, the observer. And for, believe it or not, Freud understood this as well. As we develop spiritually and psychically, we develop the capacity to stand in a neutral place within us, as close to the I, the self, and look at ourself and how we operate without reacting to it. That's the observing self. It's a very, very powerful thing, part of us, not a thing, a part of us. Uh, and Freud called it the observing self as well. Uh, Sajoli, um, Sajoli said that everything that we are identified with um, controls us, and we need to learn how to disidentify. Okay. It's very powerful, folks. It's something you can teach self and others. So, and, all right, let's just look, observing personality, go hand in hand. Let's get out of guided imagery quickly. Yeah, so personality, go back. Yeah, we use a lot of guided imagery because it has the capacity to both tune in to the higher self as well as to go to the basement and look at what, what exists at a, at a lower lower level. Maybe let's finish up with the left and right brain. That would be a good place to kind of end our thing for today. And this is this is something. This is, it's been wonderful in a sense in our lifetime. In our life, for those of us who are a little older, like I am, we've watched science uh, really explore this whole notion of left and right brainedness and what the capacity is of the left and right. Uh, Last night I had the great pleasure. I went. There's a there's a group. There's a, a something put on here in Shasta called uh, Music by the Mountains, which is bringing together very seasoned musical teachers uh, with uh, young people who are very talented. So there, with the right brain experience of listening to music, enjoying it, soaking it in, having the flow experience of music, you know. And uh, left brain, never leave home without it. Uh, <laughs> I, I still I still love to reason and uh, to be critical sometimes, you know, <laughs> critical in a good sense of the term. So, yeah, um, hopefully psychosynthesis uses um, uses both. So, OK, folks, and as I said to you, you're very welcome to take these slides Nikki, I don't know if you've got a way to getting them out to people so they can uh, use the slides, but you're very welcome yeah. to. Uh, and I want a little commercial for those of you who are in ministry and are doing counseling. Uh, psychosynthesis is a, is a really good tool. So, oh, you know, Mickey, you know what I should have done there? At, the very, at the very end, there's some books that I mentioned. Can okay. You, can you do that? Yeah. Okay. This that'll be a show and tell, and that's a good place to transition. Okay. I'm sorry, catch you. No problem. Catch you midway here. There we go. We can go all the way to the end, or pretty much to the end. Yeah. Okay. Some good slides here. But that was that woman there. That wonderful woman was my teacher. That's Edith Stoffer. She was my psychosynthesis teacher. She was very much a, 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 a student, so a student of New Thought, as well as Roberto Azioli and all these techniques that I've been talking about. Down here, um, Where? okay, yeah. down at the very there we go. Um, if you want, if you can find this book, and there's a newer version, so it won't have the same cover. 
This is Asagioli's basic foundational book, Psychosynthesis, a Manual of Techniques. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a popular book. It's not an easy read necessarily, but it's talking about the things much more easily read Piero Ferrucci. I'm sorry, I got to use my hand too. Piero Ferrucci. <laughs> um, Piero was, uh, was uh, very close to Asagioli, a really good student. He has several books out there. Uh, what We May Be is a wonderful place to start, as well as Beauty and uh, a book on beauty. So, okay, that's it. This one? Yeah, yeah, hmm? that's okay. the one. Awesome. Those, uh, and if you go, if you go to Amazon and go Piero Ferrucci and go uh, uh, good, good used copy, <laughs> yeah. probably for ten bucks you can find one. So, okay, all right, we did it. Whew. Good job. <laughs> yeah, I can see you need to come back and and uh, go through the rest of the slides and talk. That was wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you guys you guys on your own can go and go through and get the idea um there is a website that i mentioned there um in in the uh, in the ending um a huge amount of articles that are free that all you have to do is go to them, print them read them online whatever you like to do on psychosynthesis sub personalities all kinds of issues and so on. So the whole lot there. So beautiful. Questions, comments. I have a comment. Uh, your mentor. Yes. The stopper. She came, yes. She was in my home one time and she taught a course on forgiveness. Ah, okay. And so the easiest answer to the uh, basement <laughs> that we're playing in the muck and mire is often the solution is often forgiveness. When we, we find something like we're presently working with a young man who has a lot to give, but because of da being damaged in his early childhood, uh, he carries that into the present day. It doesn't allow him to see the good in himself. Mm -hmm. And so forgiveness is a great tool for to that. Yes. She was she was very um Edith was Edith was not scholarly, and some of the more scholarly types in psychosynthesis are very critical of her because she couldn't necessarily quote chapter and verse or, uh, you know, underlying uh, scientific stuff. But she absolutely bang on got people and uh, was, was ab absolutely intuitive in her work with people, which, by the way, doing, doing guided imagery with folks and being highly intuitive yourself is very helpful. Because I've had many, I personally have had many experiences. I'm working with somebody and I'm doing, I'm doing imagery work with them. And all of a sudden I'll get an image. I, I remember a guy, a college student I work with, as an example, a college student I worked with and uh, about his love of guns and the military and combat and all kinds of things. So I'm doing a guided imagery with him. All of a sudden I got an image and the image was uh, a World War II Jeep in the in the, the desert probably africa flying a flag it was a black flag with a white rat on it and i and i so i learned to trust what comes up you know so i said i just got the strangest image and then he said to me yes that was my repeated childhood dream uh, so yeah, my intuitive capacity picked up on what was for him a reality of growing up, which helps to explain his love of guns. And so is it reincarnational? Probably, although I wasn't going to say this is definitely reincarnational, but could be, could be. But, you know, if, uh, many dozens of experiences like that where you learn to trust what comes up. And also, and again, my fellow ministerial folks, uh, trusting your own dream life do you keep track of your dreams do you keep track of your dreams do you analyze your dreams do you subject your dreams to the wisdom of the higher self sitting with them 
and uh, you know raising raising up to that that higher level. Um, so to pay attention to that, remember the the in the egg diagram, the higher portions of the unconscious mind, which are where a lot of this wisdom called the buddhic plane. Uh, what's a Buddha? Someone that functions on the buddhic plane and uh, pure pure wisdom, pure knowledge. And uh, yeah, so anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Anything else from you guys? Well, I wondered how much of this is correlating with shadow work, or do you call it that sub subconscious or shadow work? <laughs> I think as far as I know, it's the same thing. <laughs> okay. It just, it just really is. The, 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 the only cautionary note that I would throw in is, and this is Sajoli and my own teacher, Edith Stoffer, to not necessarily dive into that, into the pool and try and be there too much. Uh, come out of the... I. I and three times a week, I'm going to the recreation center here to try and build up my old body. And, you know, so I'm diving into the pool. Well, I don't want to be in the deep end for too long. <laughs> um, we all have that shadow side and we need to deal with it, but we don't want to make it. The, we don't want to make it the big focus in a, in a certain way. So you know, that's that's my opinion, I'm giving my opinion. So. Yeah, one of our one of our uh, members. One yeah. of our new ministers is a shadow work, light worker, or shadow worker, mm -hmm. like, whatever the professional certification is of the study of such. But B, do you happen to know what Sally's title is? I don't, but in my um, first uh, Madonna ministry circle with Anya, I was labeled the shadow queen. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> So in some of the work you're going to do, worker. yeah. So huh. some of the work you're going to do with us is sort of in that arena, but then healing. Sure. I mean, I that. think it's kind of part of all of my work for sure, because mm -hmm. I just don't shy away from it. I see so many people really having a lot of challenges because they don't face things, mm -hmm. and I think shadow work is just facing those things, right? Yeah. But is it facing them so they go away or just acknowledging that they're there and just visiting once in a while? Well, you have to acknowledge something before you can work with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, I mean, I love what you said, Chuck, about not staying in it. You know, you don't want to live in that all the time, but it's good to go in there, do the work, face it, come back out. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. I had the, I had the this, this is a segue, but... Uh... Because I worked at Bastyr University, and because Bastyr is a, a bastion for liberalness and politics and spirituality and sexual identity, you know, and that's that's kind of how they roll. In Seattle, which is a liberal bastion as well, and so what I'm getting to is I see a lot of people kind of walk through the door. They could not be happy. I get. I mean, I get it. I'm kind of rather pink old liberal guy myself. But Donald Trump is the president. I can't be happy. Um, you know, or the war is going on in the Ukraine. And I can't. I, I. You know, how do I live with myself? And da 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 da. And I get it. I mean, you know, I'm a, li I'm a pretty liberal guy myself. I get it. But. There's the being obsessed with these dark things in the world. You know what I'm saying? And not finding that core, that observing self, the core, the light within us, the light within. Um, the voice of silence uh, inside that we can look out from. And we, for God's sakes, don't have to like these things <laughs> around us. But we're not over and overwhelmed with these things and i see it so often amongst the folks who frankly politically and spiritually were a lot like myself but had learned to focus so much and i have to be careful i'm a cnn addict <laughs> <laughs> you know i have to be careful that you know i'm not a, a, just spending all my time being absorbed in all the the bad stuff in the world which is endless 
Am I making sense when I say this to you guys? And this yeah, or... yeah, we have some yeah. some futurist teachers who call the CNN the either crisis news network or the constantly negative news. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's, there's, yeah, no, there's, there's truth in it. And uh, you know, when they try and do a happy story, it seems out of context totally. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem real. So, you know, let's come back to something at the very beginning that I said. Um, this is, I'm talking to a group of spiritually minded people. You are the soul. Everybody you will minister to or counsel is also the soul. And so we have personality. We are soul incarnated into a personality. We are soul incarnated into a personality. It's our choice. And if you believe it, we chose our parents. We chose our environment. We chose where to be born, you know, or karmically we had to. <laughs> But who we are at a deeper level is the higher self or the soul. And that's what the transpersonal, beyond the personality, transpersonal, beyond the personality uh, psychology comes from, from that belief system. Um, we've slipped a little bit away from it in the last maybe 20 years. And during my heyday with Edith Stauffer back in the 1980s, 1990s, um, the Transpersonal Psychology Association was, was very, very active. Uh, and I go to their conferences every year and the Humanistic Psychology Association Conference and so on. Um, the, it's, it's not as prevalent, it's not as central in some ways. And a lot of other things are happening, that's good. But that focus on we are not the personality. I have a personality, I am not my personality. I have it, but that's not who I am. Does that make sense to you guys? So, yeah, Ernest Holmes said something that was hard for people and for me to get originally that uh, God is the creator, it is not absorbed by the creation. So, God doesn't get into the basement. <laughs> yeah. God, God is in the basement. Yes. God likeness. Yep. It's never corrupted. Yep. Yep. And it, this were in a sense, I don't want to go too far here, but I'll just say I've, I've, I've experienced the light and the wisdom of the higher self many times in my life. And sometimes almost on a daily basis of tuning into something that's um, in using a little commercial, you guys, for using pranayama, the science of breathing. And I, if you've been using the so hum technique for 30 years or so, you know, the in breath is so and the out breath is hum. Um, I can at this very second. I experienced that central point, the peace and the silence inside. Understood? Simple as that. After, hey, it's as simple as 30 years of practice. <laughs> so eventually, I guess you come into the awareness that what's doing the breathing <laughs> is the spirit within you. And so you identify with that spirit, but that is beyond separation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I often go to sleep uh, by watching my breath. And yes, and yes, and yes. Works well. That's that is a yogic spiritual technique of going going to sleep while doing while doing the. I'll just say pranayama because that's the that's the Indian term for it. Using the pranayama as you go to sleep, therefore going into the soul as we go to sleep. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to mention something at the beginning. This is totally aside to everything. When you were doing the initial invocation, Charlie, I used to go to a Unitarian church in St. Paul, Minnesota, and the minister would start every service by saying, the place where we are gathered is holy ground. Yeah. 
I would love that, but I also think the virtual place that we are gathered <laughs> is virtual holy ground. <laughs> you, might be, you might be virtually right. <laughs> I, could be, I could be virtually wrong and living in the basement. I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for the uh, honor of allowing me to come and speak with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We so appreciate it. Kevin, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, other than I watched a uh, uh, show on TV last night, a uh, competition amongst uh, uh, glass blowers. Oh. And uh, the one contestant did this incredible uh, piece that took up a whole half room kind of thing. And it was uh, her her growth in grief. She was going through grief. But what she did, she had all these uh, out of glass, these massive ink stains, and they went up and formed a basket and held an egg. And I thought of that image when you were describing the egg uh, dialogue or the egg drawing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what a perfect, you know, I just saw last night that whole uh, thing almost projected on the screen. So it was kind of uh, blended uh, lesson kind of thing. And, and great visualization. Yes. You know, it's interesting, and, and for so many of us, uh, I have a fairly strong Christian ministry background be before other things. And uh, uh, Jesus taught us in parables and illustrations. And there once was a man, uh, there was, you know, <laughs> talking about things that people understood. And like you're saying, um, these metaphors that are extraordinarily powerful. The people they get it at those other unconscious levels they get the metaphor mm -hmm. you know so yeah anyway yeah and kevin's like a funeral director anyway uh so uh, is that your background yes yeah okay. a retired undertaker a retired undertaker i'm the last one to let you down <laughs> uh, Kevin, Kevin, I don't want to see you too soon. No, no, no that that <laughs> seems to be the you know people people uh, are mixed when they leave. They don't want to say see you soon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Although I believe in reincarnation, so it's very possible. <laughs> or now there's immortality. <laughs> I'm just getting you ready for the next life. Like the, uh, like the ancient Egyptians did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when yeah. Ernest, Ernest Holmes used to do memorial services, the only time, where, you know, because people were there and a lot of them upset, a lot of grieving going on. And what often, what he knew in his heart, when he got through the grieving process and got to that center of peace within him, that was past the ordinary understanding of grieving, that he found the light center within himself. And so when he reached that point, he knew that the memorial service was concluded. Karine, did you want to jump in? You said you might. I just wanted to say that I learned so much and um, it's amazing because I just want to share briefly an experience that I had. Um, I went somewhere and I saw a um, this crib from like the 1960s and it was metal and it looked like, and I saw actually myself there as a baby and I just started crying and bawling because I had that, I'd known I was hospitalized when I was only 11 months old. And the story is that I, I was sick for three days and they had to feed me in a and say, my mom said how they tied my little hands down. They tied my feet down and fed me intravenously for three days because I looked like a Holocaust victim. Wow. So I saw that baby there and I just cried and cried and cried because I saw 
I realized how much that emotionally had taken a toll on me throughout my life. So it was a very beautiful cleansing experience. And I worked on that. And mm -hmm. so when you were saying that where you connected with the a gentleman with the flag, that was amazing. So it's amazing what our souls hold. and Well, not our souls, but our bodies hold, you know? Yes. And you know, in the, in the, in the illustration that you just gave from your, your own life experience, part of what psychosynthesis might do, depending on the therapist and so on, um, use guided imagery work. Use imagery work to have you love and nourish and take care of that part of yourself, to image yourself doing that, loving and nurturing and caring and freeing. As, as the loving adult that you've become, to be able to go back and to work with that aspect and, uh, and imagery, I find imagery is the most powerful way of doing that. Well, I did. I did just to share. I don't know if you've heard of EMDR. That I oh, and and I did that with the therapist and went back and like changed the whole story where it was a loving experience and yep. and that I was okay and it was amazing because I'm so close to my grandmother and my mom said. And nothing gets my mom. This is the 60s. She just said, well, you wouldn't look at me. So, you know, she didn't visit me. But my grandmother, my mom told me, was there every single day. And I remember as a little girl taking naps at her house because she watched me. And I would always jerk awake because I wanted to make sure she was there when I was taking my nap. And now I realize probably as a baby, I did that because I wanted to make sure she stayed. So it's amazing. But thank you for sharing that. Thank you for, no, thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, in Chuck's early, early slides, he was letting us know that uh, 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 years one through three or whatever in our life, uh, we pick up a lot of uh, psychic and emotional feelings we're totally unaware of growing up as adults. Uh, and, and a lot of times they do carry baggage. And so psychosynthesis then becomes a, a good tool for um, making that baggage uh, not only lighter, but to disappear. Name it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Really quick, I wanted to offer um, a thought when you were sharing, Kareen. I found that EMDR at times felt like slow soul retrieval work. And I've worked with shamans doing soul retrieval. And it's when your, your soul is safe enough when you're older for the pieces of you that, that split off and, and went somewhere safe to finally come back and, and integrate. So that, that's just what that reminded me of. And that was a really beautiful story. Thanks for sharing. Oh, oh thank you. Cool. Hey, you guys, th thanks to all of you, you know, um, by the way, that, and I don't, Charlie didn't mention this at the beginning, but my own um, equivalence to what you guys are doing, uh, um, I, I was ordained in uh, the Church of Antioch uh, by Warren Prowl Waters in 1980, so God, when you get old enough that you're looking at 40 or 50 years ago, gulp. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so and the Church of Antioch also being a breakaway from the liberal Catholic Church. So yeah. the foundation in Ojai, California. So we have a very similar rootedness, you guys. So <laughs> very yeah. nice. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're very welcome. My yeah. pleasure. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to reiterate that uh, Warren Waters, who you're talking about, yep. uh, consecrated and made me a priest, but he also consecrated uh, Arnold Michael, uh, who, was the, who wrote Plus Among Women, who was the founder of the Madonna Ministry. Charlie, would you turn off your video so that your audio has more bandwidth? Because I keep having you break up and I can't understand. Oh, sorry. How do, how do I correct it? Okay. I can't. Oh, I think, I think she just said, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
befriend <laughs> that I forgot your name is that you need to shut off the video and just leave the the voice on. Is that what you were trying to say to him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you hear yeah, me? Charles? Give your voice more bandwidth so it stops breaking up. Oh, okay. Let me see if I you guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and exit. And uh, thank you, Chuck. Namaste. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Namaste to everybody. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Beautiful. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. Bye bye.